Okay, this is the first video on integration by substitution. Similar to how we first introduced the chain rule when we did uh, differentiation, um, you'll remember that I said that the chain rule could be thought of as differentiation by substitution. Because what we were doing is we were making a substitution to, to turn the, dif um, the function that we were trying to differentiate into a simpler function that allowed us to differentiate. Then once we got into a habit, we didn't need to do the full process anymore. Integration by substitution is harder, um, but the process is pretty similar. Um, this is the process. You're going to pick your substitution. You are then going to differentiate that substitution and rearrange it. You're then going to substitute all of the x's from the integral. You will then integrate what you get left and then right at the end you do the substitution back. So that's the process. Let's do a couple of examples. So, first thing, I want to integrate cos 3x plus 1 with respect to x. So step one, I'm going to pick my substitution. The substitution that I'm going to pick is to replace 3x plus 1, because that's what's making the cos function a bit more complicated. So I'm going to say u equals 3x plus 1. I'm going to differentiate that. So I'm going to differentiate u with respect to x. I differentiate that and I get 3. Now the reason why I'm differentiating here is because as well as replacing this 3x plus 1, I must replace the dx as well. That is really important. If I'm going to get rid of the 3x plus 1, I can't integrate with respect to x anymore. I need to integrate with respect to u, not x. So I must replace this as well as this. Going back to steps, that's why I've underlined here all. You must substitute all of the x's. You cannot integrate a u with respect to x can't do it, so we must swap the dx as well. Which is why I'm differentiating, because differentiating gives me a dx. I can now rearrange this to make dx the subject. So dx equals, so if I move that to the top up here, move the 3 down to the bottom, I will get dx is 1 third du. So I've done step 1, picked my substitution, I've differentiated it and rearranged it. That was step two. Step three is to replace all of the x's. So I'm going to replace this with my u. And I'm going to replace this with my one third du. So I will be left with cos u multiplied by one third du. OK, right. Now, because one third is just a constant, I can make this integral a bit easier for myself by taking it outside of the integral sign. And now this is easy to integrate. I know that cos integrates to become sine. So I can rewrite this as one third sine u plus c. Don't forget your constant of integration. And then the final step is to substitute back. So remember u was 3x plus 1. And that's my final answer. Let's do another example. So I've got e to the 2x plus 1. Pick my substitution. I'm going to pick u as being 2x plus 1, because that's what's making this function a bit harder. If it's just e to the power u, it's easy. Differentiate. So differentiating this with respect to x, I get 2. Make dx the subject, so move the dx to the top, move the 2 down here. I get dx is equal to 1 half du. Next step, substitute all of the x's. So I'm going to get rid of this, replace it with a u. Get rid of this and replace it with a half du. So I will end up with e to the u multiplied by a half du. 
Just like in the last example, I can take the half outside to make this integral a bit easier for myself. Now I know that e to the u integrates to be e to the u. So this is going to become a half e to the u plus c. And then finally make my substitution back. And there we go. Okay, next example. Step one, pick my substitution. What's making this complicated is this inside the path five. This is what's on the inside of my function here. So I'm going to say u equals 4x minus 1. Differentiate it. du by dx is equal to 4. Make dx the subject. So dx equals 1 quarter du, just by moving the dx up there, the 4 down here. Substitute all of the x's, so this gets replaced with the u. This gets replaced with the 1 quarter du. So I will get left with uh, the u to the power 5 times 1 quarter du. Just like in the last example, take the 1 quarter to the front to make it a bit simpler. And this is going to integrate to be u to the power 6 over 1 sixth. But then you've got a quarter at the front there. So 1 quarter times by 1 sixth is going to be 1 over 24. Plus c. And then make the substitution back at the end. So swap the u here. Remember, my u was 4x minus 1. OK, so this is my final answer. So just remember the steps of integration by substitution. Step 1, you pick your substitution. Step 2, you need to differentiate it and rearrange to make dx the subject. Step 3, you're going to substitute all of the x's including the dx, most important. Then, right at the end, you can integrate and then make the substitution back. Right, that's the process of integration by substitution. You need to know it. You're going to do it over and over again with some really complicated functions over the next few videos. However, I've picked the three examples we've done so far on purpose, and some of you might have noticed a little pattern. Some, some of you might have noticed a shortcut. And you might have noticed at the beginning of the video, I called this the reverse chain rule. Let's just go and have a look. All of these functions I've looked at were linear on the inside. The 3x plus 1, that's linear inside the cos. The 2x plus 1, that's linear inside the exponential. The 4x minus 1, that's linear inside the power 5. So this shortcut only works if it's linear really important. Okay? If the inside is linear, you can use this shortcut. Well, what is the shortcut? Well, let's look at this. What happened? The cos integrated and became a sine. Well, that's what, that's what normally happens. Cos integrates become sine normally. The only difference here is I've divided by 3 at the front. I've divided by the 3 there. So what I could have done is I could have just looked at this and gone, ah, right, look, that's linear. So cos integrates to be sine, so I get sine 3x plus 1, and divide by 3. All right, that's linear. So, use the shortcut, the exponential integrates to be the exponential, and divide by 2. Shortcut, right, that's linear, so we can use the shortcut. So let's integrate the power 5. So integrate to the power 5, that's going to become a power 6, with a 1 sixth at the front. But we need to divide by 4 because of this. So we get 1 over 24. There we go. So in all of these examples, 
we are using this shortcut. If we want to integrate a function and it's linear on the inside, I can't stress that enough, it has to be linear inside here. If you have a squared inside there, or a sine, or a cos, or a, uh, an exponential, or anything like that inside the function, this will not work, and you will have to do the full integration by substitution method. But if it is linear on there, all you actually need to do is integrate the outside function, so integrate whatever's on the outside, and then divide it by a. Which hopefully kind of makes sense why I'm calling this the reverse chain rule. Because remember when we did the chain rule, we differentiate the function, and then we multiply it by the derivative of what's on the inside. Here we are dividing by the derivative of what's on the inside. So just a couple more quick examples. So I'm looking here. If I was asked to integrate this question, I would spot that this is a linear function on the inside here. I know how to integrate 1 over x. It would give me ln. So I look at this and think, right, that's going to be ln 3x plus 2. But because it's uh, a composite function, I need to divide by the 3. I need to divide by 3 because of that there. Plus c. So I look at this and think 1 over, right, that integrates to be ln. So I'm going to get ln 3x plus 2, and then divide by 3. Over here, notice that's linear. So integrate the power 4. So that's now going to be a power 5. So I get 2x plus 3 to the power 5. I need to divide by the 5, but I would also need to divide by the 2 to the biodiverse chain rule. So this is now going to be a 1 10. So there we go. This video has been an introduction to integration by substitution. You've seen the process of how we do it properly. Um, and like I say, there's no getting around this. You're going to need to know this uh, throughout the rest of your A level. Um, this will work for all um, functions that you can integrate in your A-level, so um, you've seen so far. Um, and we've seen a few examples of how to use it, and then we've seen that if it's linear on the inside, you can do a bit of a shortcut, but only if it's linear.